So this is the final workshop of this class and what we'll be doing is applying all of the skills that we've learned and amassed inside of this class to teach you how to calendar block inside of a calendar. So I'll be sharing my screen in a moment in which we'll be diving into the calendar app of my choice to look at, into it a little bit further. Now calendar applications are pretty wild in terms of the options but I just want to remind you of three important things when choosing one. The first is if they have color coding systems, this is really helpful for calendar blocking and could be a great way for you to identify whatever you like in terms of context. We'll be showing you that in a moment. The second is multiple calendars is always helpful for making sure you capture everything in one location. And the third concept is essentially making sure it's available on the right devices. If you use your Android phone mostly and your Windows device, they're making sure they're available on both of those and syncing is really helpful. Obviously there are some great default ones out there, but we're gonna dive into this and inside the workshop and really dig a little bit deeper into this skill. So as you can see the screen in front of us, we're using an app called Cron. Now this is a more recent calendar application, but it's mine of choice for a number of reasons. However, let's start calendar blocking. Now what I've done is I've skipped forward to a week in the future. Now very simply, I've got a few meetings on here already. You might have more than this, you may have less than this, but it's important to be able to work around these ones and obviously calendar block effectively. Now, the one thing I always recommend, as we've talked about throughout this class, is don't overload yourself. One of the things that we tend to do is block from the start of the day at 5 a.m. all the way to the end, even adding in small elements of our routine like brushing our teeth or maybe like putting the washing on. It doesn't need to turn into a task list. It needs to be a cleaner place for you to focus. It's your time, it's not necessarily a task. Although these blocks will help you to keep orientated. So let's start with Monday morning. Now, when I'm on a Monday morning, I typically have a lot of energy. But in this case, I've actually only got a two hour block before a meeting. Now, what I will do is I'll add, what I am using is medium sized calendar blocks. So the difference is with, with the way I recommend or the way I do it is that I do large, medium and small based around the bento methodology, but basically a medium task because I have medium energy. I don't have enough time to do something pretty weighty that would be quite substantial before this meeting because I'm traveling into it. So maybe need to adjust for 20 minutes to get there. And I don't, really want to necessarily do a small one because I have enough time to do a medium sized task or medium sized block. So what I'm gonna do is simply drag the first hour and 15 minutes or it could be just an hour. And I might want to do something like write medium and that's for articles, right? Let's just spell this correctly. So obviously one of the things there that's pretty helpful is I'm allocating not just a task, I'm allocating a type of task. So in this case is right medium. I tend to get three done in this period of time, but you don't want to necessarily say, okay, I want to do two or three. You just want to have a block to be a sort of theme versus necessarily a tangible task because you know what you're going to do in that period of time. And that probably belongs in your project or task manager, in my opinion. So as you can see here, I've got a medium one. I can add the details if I wanted to, if I was avoiding the using of the task manager. But what I'm gonna do down here is I'm actually gonna give this one an orange color. An orange color for me indicates energy levels. So that's my medium energy level. When I get back from the meetings, I'm probably gonna have a bit of a sort of way to get myself back into the day. So I might do sort of some light admin, but I'm gonna allocate a pretty big task for the afternoon, maybe a one and a half hour slot to focus on recording. And as I said, I'm trying to keep these verbs generalized. That's how I work, but I'm gonna give this one a nice red one, indicating that my energy level needs to be higher after this. You may come back from the meetings and be a bit more relaxed and need something smaller to do, but I tend to like doing the small things in the afternoon. So I'm going to do a uh, clear inbox and use this to work on certain projects that are in my inbox. And you can see yellow has given me an indication that it's the lowest um, energy. So I've got yellow for um, smaller tasks, orange for medium tasks, and red 
for large tasks. They just help me to heat map my energy levels across a day. But you can apply this in any context you want. So for example, if you wanted to put only stuff, say you work in marketing and sales, marketing in red, sales in blue, that could be a good start. You could, for example, want to coordinate personal stuff in purple and work stuff in blue. It's really up to you on what's suitable. So you may also want to turn your meetings into a different color. So I could turn meetings green and this might help to be able to spot them from afar and make sure that I'm doing them in there. Now, one of the things that um, you might want to do and we've talked about is adding breaks consistently. Obviously, we don't want to add every micro break in here where we scroll TikTok or some other social media site. So what we want to do is put intentional breaks, periods of time when we can actually relax. So in this case, when I come back from this meeting, I might be a little bit, just need a few moments to pause. And what I want to do is potentially have some lunch. Um, that's a good time to have lunch. So you may want to add some lunch in there. I might just move my recording 15 minutes for setup time during that period of time. And I might give this an indication of, uh, I'm gonna call it green because maybe it's, actually no, a green is a bad example. I'm gonna put it purple. And you could go into this and repeat this every single day or copy and paste it into the other ones. But it really depends like how you organize your day. I typically say to, book a full week in advance, like make sure you have some sort of level of coordination on there. And if you have a task manager, you can connect them to, to make your calendar blocking easier to do, but obviously you'll still have those task titles in there. But as long as you've got the gist of the theme that you're working on, then this can be quite good. So obviously you wanna weave in your breaks. You may actually want to put a break here, maybe a shorter one and condense it down to 15 minutes. So you may be able to put them across your work day and suitably put them there. And you can continue into the evening. Let's say you don't necessarily want to, you want this time, I know that I'm gonna spend time with my son, so I might say Otto in the park. And in this case, I'm gonna put that purple because it's more of a break, work's finished. And then, you know, you could go to the end of the day, but there's not much value. The, the thing that's important is calendar blocking isn't about stuffing your time on here. It's about giving yourself some level of structure so that when it comes to looking at it, you've got a sense of what you're working on. I think there's always good points to break and to pause. And this is a good example of say this day here, it looks pretty fresh. It looks pretty clean. It looks, it doesn't look too overloaded. And the benefit of having this is if you have a calendar that's particularly connected to something like Google Calendar or a Microsoft Calendar, you can associate to this time being busy. So no one can book a meeting with you during these focused deep state periods of time. And that's really, really helpful. Now, one thing we talked about in this class is the concept of task types and batching. It's a concept developed by Mike Varney. But this is very simply implemented by going up to here and tapping an all day event. So in this case, it, this might be a create day because I'm writing, I'm recording, maybe. Maybe I could move the inbox out here and um, I could put something a little bit different, like a type of task that we'd be creating, like uh, create newsletters, just to, to get myself in that mindset. So I might put this as my smaller task to do, just heat map it. There we go. So you can get an idea of, okay, this is a create day now. You could repeat this every single Monday if that's the one you're having. And you could even give it a color if you wanted. And the color may be different to, to the way that you schemed it before. I might put it in here. Or you could give it a nice emoji in the top right corner. So put an art emoji like this. Just being able to differentiate the day and know in advance, okay, create days are a Monday. Type of task is quite helpful. Type of calendar block type of theme on the day is helpful for being able to book that. So obviously you'd implement this across a week and it just be a great way to coordinate this. So in this case, I might say, okay, to this day might be an administration day. So I might put strategy workshop uh, with uh, uh, marketing. This could be obviously much more correlated to what you work on with your team. So in this case, that might be my red task and I might break for lunch. So it's really important, in my opinion, it's really important to 
judge your energy levels across a day. This is related to how well you work. And the best way to do that actually is to get a A4 piece of paper. And as you go across a, a day or a work week is to draw a sort of like line of where your energy levels are. You'll have some peaks. My typical peaks around 11 a.m and troughs, mine is 1 p.m. my trough, and then it comes back in the afternoon. Not as strong as the morning, but 3 p.m. it sort of, and then it peaks out for because I end the day typically around then. So it's important to take that time and basically, well, take that graph and basically apply it to this concept. Heat mapping your energy levels will allow you to see, okay, 11 a.m., I've got the most energy, which means I should work my biggest task or earlier, depending, because you're obviously progressing up. Or you could potentially say, okay, that trough, I can work on my small ones because I'm not using too much energy, but I'm getting stuff done. Using that methodology, it can actually really, really help to make sure you're not overworking yourself too much. Obviously, it's really dependent on what your team allow you to do, but I would experiment with this concept for a couple of weeks and see how it places you. When I started doing something like this, this sort of skill of embracing energy levels, it dramatically helped my productivity. So I think I've taught you most of the calendar blocking aspects of this. This is really easy to do and can be even faster with the ability to repeat stuff. But primarily that's what I recommend for calendar blocking using all of these techniques that we've learned, these skills, and I think you'll embrace it really well. Making sure to really just I think work-life balance is all about that energy levels. So it's it, it's a new world we're working in with work. So it'll be exciting to see how that progresses. So I hope you enjoyed this calendar blocking workshop. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, but there are plenty more Skillshare classes that we've produced here on Skillshare. Thank you very much. My name is Sam Tresco and I'll talk to you soon.